The thumbnail for some of my PlayStation 2 related videos was a PS2 console piano hybrid. It was a model that I quickly slapped together in SketchUp and brought into Blender for rendering and animation. It's a relatively low detail and low accuracy model, so for fun, I thought I'd create a more detailed and slightly more accurate version. First, I need to get some reference photos and measurements of both the PlayStation 2 and a keyboard. I have a few different keyboards, but I'll just use this M Audio Radium 49. The model will be more like the Oxygen 25 I normally use for small projects, but the keys are the standard size. Now, let's get some measurements from the PS2. They're certainly available online, but I have the console right here, so I'll just get what I need this way. Let's start with the basic size and shape of the PS2. It's 11 and 5 8 inches by 6 and 7 8 inches by 3 inches. In decimals, that's 11.625 inches by 6.875 inches by 3 inches, according to my measurements. But online, the measurements are slightly different at 11.9 inches by 7.2 inches by 3.1 inches. Huh. I, I guess we'll go with the dimensions given online. Maybe this ruler was made incorrectly. How weird. We start off with the basic shape. Blender is weird about extruding anything inward if it isn't surrounded by geometry, so I had to extrude first and then move those sides back into position. Now there's characteristic ridges on the upper part of the console's front and right side, dividing up at the front a bit to get the placement for the disc tray, door, and the controller and memory card ports. Also, dissolving some of the horizontal lines used to proportion the ridges. Moving the disc tray inward, doing a slight inset, and extruding it back out to the front. I had to make a couple of tries at this to get it right. Alright, now on to the controller and memory card ports. We do things in a similar fashion to how the disc tray was made. Dividing the controller port plugs into thirds. And extruding them. Adding a slight bevel. Now to create the pinholes in the controller ports. This is done using a boolean operation and then making the pins hidden. Now, here are the power and eject buttons. The ridges on the console make it easy to know how they are placed and exactly what size they are. The eject button here should have a bit of a slant outward. Now here are the front air vents. I had to do a couple of tries on these too. This part was a little tedious because I kept getting duplicate faces and had some trouble getting the inset to work just how I wanted it. There. Finally. Front air vents done. Now the section for the USB and IEEE 1394 aka Firewire ports. I should note that I don't put most of the text and decals on this model. Things like the USB and Firewire port labels, for example. Also any stickers on the back. 
I also don't put that PS logo on the disc tray door, although I could have. You'll see why later. There we go. Nothing fancy. Now for the Sony logo. In terms of the SVG files I imported into this model, this one gave me the least trouble. The placement is easy enough. It spans four ridges and is equidistant from the buttons and the side ridge gap interiors. Now to start defining the materials on the model. I start by setting the plastic color for the console chassis and the blue for the USB ports area. Here's the Boolean cutout for the IEEE 1394-Firewire port. It's not terribly accurate, but it'll be fine for this model. Getting the placement right using an orthographic front view. Now to add the power switch on the back along with the power connector. Now to make the two pins on the inside of the power plug port. Power port plug pins. Good thing I'm using a pop filter on this microphone. <laughs> the pins were acting a bit odd when I was moving them around. It might be because they weren't separate objects. Now to create the vents for the fan. Dividing up the surface here to create the grid for the fan was difficult. Sometimes that knife tool doesn't seem to want to work on some surfaces. <laughs> I finally get it to play nice. Now to create the fan! placing the fan inside the console. Let's put something behind that fan inside the console so that the back side of the front geometry doesn't show and make the whole thing look empty. Animating the fan spinning. Took a few tries to get it to rotate around the x-axis as intended. There we go. Not quite as loud as the real thing, though. Now to make the rubber feet. Kinda hard to see here, so I switched to wireframe. There are six square ones underneath the console and four rectangular ones on the left side. Adjusting the material for the front Sony logo. Ah! Because I accidentally left the keyframe record button on, the feet and the Sony logo were animated. I had to fix that and reposition the feet. There we go. The PS2 logo imported as an SVG. It did not play nice at all! <sighs> Yikes. That geometry in the logo is all messed up. I had to work on it in Illustrator off-screen to fix it. Ah, there. Cleaned up the SVG and was able to extrude it. It's almost right, except there's a Boolean error on the two. I fixed that by using Mesh, Clean Up, Merge by Distance. I apply that Boolean and set the color of the PS2 logo to blue. Now to create the LEDs that are part of the power and eject buttons. The power LED, when the console is on, is green, and the eject button LED is violet.
adding the AV connector and the optical audio port on the back. I don't spend a whole lot of time trying to get the placement of these completely accurate. And now the expansion port door. Fun fact, the expansion port is an excellent place to keep some spare snacks for those long gaming sessions. But I guess you could also install a hard drive there too, if you wanted. Well, now we have the PlayStation 2 model done. But we're not stopping there. This model is going to have a piano built in. Adding some bevels and fixing up some gaps that appeared on the back. Now we size up the keyboard. Okay, I made quite a few attempts at this because I forgot how to do it at first. So for a 25 key keyboard, there are 15 white keys. The white keys have a consistent width, so there are 15 divisions. I do the loop cut to get those 15 divisions. The trick for creating and placing the black keys is to divide up the width of the keyboard into 7 per octave, but then group those divisions into the widths of 3 white keys and then 4 white keys alternating that for the length of the keyboard. And then those groupings should be given 5 and 7 divisions, respectively, again alternating for the length of the keyboard. Took me a while to remember how that was done. So for anyone planning to model piano keyboards, that's the easiest way i found to remember. After having the key widths properly defined, the rest can be done visually. Extruding the keys and putting the black and white keys together. Adding bevels to the black keys. Now we put the keyboard into place on the main model. And all that's left are the finishing touches. I adjust and add lights, put in a ground plane, and create a rotating animation. And there we go. Still not a 100% accurate model, but I suppose it's close. It was fun. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you in the next video.